When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord had done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey end. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them. See what God has done. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the ones that are here, Lord. Be with the ones that couldn't be here tonight. Lord, we lift up our prayer bulletin to you, Lord. We just lift up our nation and our world to you, Lord. We just know that you're the one that's in control, Lord. We just give it all to you. Lord, we just love you. We thank you for all you did for us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next song will be page number 310. Again, we'll sing one, two, and four. Page 310. Sweetly, Lord, sweetly, Lord, we have heard thee calling. Come, follow me. And we see where thy footprints falling lead us to Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. Though they lead o'er the cold, dark mountains, seeking His. Where they go. Last 
Then at last went on high, he sees us our journey done. We will rest where the steps of Jesus and at his throne. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where they go. Tell me page number 14. We'll sing all three verses. Page number 14. Kneel at, at the, the cross. Christ will meet you there. Come while he waits for you. List to his voice. Leave him with your care. And begin life anew. get into the time of year when it's pretty nice, you know, but anyway, uh, we are in 1 Kings chapter 17, dealing with Elijah, and we are in verses 2 through 7, it says, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. 
So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. So we look and we we saw last time we, we dealt with looking at uh, not only the name of the place, Cherith, but we also looked at the nature of that place, that it was a hiding place. And it was a place that God had instructed uh, Elijah to go and to hide himself there by the brook. So it brings us to the point we see the necessity of the place. We have to notice uh, there in verse 4 the use of the word there. It, it said, and It shall be that thou shalt drink at the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So, literally, we find the necessity of Elijah was being met at Cherith. Now, if he went anywhere else, he wouldn't get he he his his the very necessities of life something to eat and being able to hide to protect his life wouldn't be it wouldn't be uh, afforded unto him. So, you know, it was the only place Elijah could be and to be right with God. He couldn't have gone anywhere else and been in the will of God except for by the brook Cherith. Any other place, he would have been in disobedience. And he wouldn't have been uh, doing what the Lord had instructed him to do. If he had gone anywhere else, for one, he would have starved to death. God had ordered provisions for Elijah, but he had ordered them to be delivered to Cherith. That was the only place that he could literally be is there at the brook Cherith. You know, at times we look in things, we look at, at this story and we see where God is providing for His children. But all He wants in return is their obedience. And here is no different. When the Lord sends us to a difficult place in life, there is the tendency to want to be somewhere else. You know, if we're, if we're at a place and in our life and, and trials, tribulation, troubles come our way, we wish we were any place else but right there. But, you know, God, after all, He knows what He's doing. You know, we, we look... Who likes pain or sickness? Who likes financial trouble? Who likes to struggle in their life? What we must learn is that if God sends us to a chariot, He knows what He is doing. And the only place for us to be is where God sends us. If we find ourselves in some difficult situation, we can do no better than to submit to it as the will of God for our lives and learn to trust Him while we're there. You know, he I'm sure Elijah's sitting up here, man, you want me to go where? You want me to hide out in a bush somewhere? In the, by this brook? It's not even a river. It's not a creek even. It's a brook. And you want me to hide there? Okay. But he went. He didn't understand it, but he went. I 
really think I, oftentimes we forget who is in control. See, I, I believe that Elijah, he understood who was in control here. Now, he may not have totally understood everything, but he understood enough. It was God who, when he marched right up to Ahab and told him, you know, hey, dude, let me, let me tell you something. I know a God that's told me to tell you that it's not going to rain until I say so. And then marched right at it. And he still got all of his hair and all of his skin and everything about it. Now God tells him, say, hey, look, you need to go hide for a while. What he was doing was getting Elijah, he was testing Elijah to see if Elijah would just trust him to take care of him. You know, we have to remind ourselves that it's the Lord, if the Lord has sent us to Cherith, it is merely just part of His plan. Paul convinces of that in Romans 8, 28. You know, and we only have two choices. The first is we can rebel. I ain't going. And you can fight, we can fight God, and we can stay in our cherith even longer. Or like Elijah, you can submit to God there in verse number uh, five, where it says, So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. So he submitted. I mean, he just went, you know, okay, Lord, if that's what you got for me, then so be it. And He will work out His plan in our lives. Just like He's going to do in Elijah's life. Elijah, he may not understand it at this point in time, but he will. In other words, you know, you can either choose to be miserable as you go through the difficulties of your life, or you can choose to rejoice in spite of your situation. That's what God would have us to do. That's what comes when we trust God in those things. There is a place for each of us that has been ordained by God. You can do no better in life than to willingly follow Him there. It may be a hard place. It may be a place that hurts. It might be a frightening place. However, if the Lord ordained that place for you, then you can do no better than to submit to His will. So we find, you know, the, the place that God had ordained. What about the promise that God offered? Look at, at verse 4 and verse uh, through six, four through six, and it shall be. He's not saying, "Hey, you go over there, and I might feed you. I might take care of you over there." That's not what he's saying. We notice what he says. He says, "And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there." So he went, did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cher, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. For whatever length of time this is, that God had promised to take care of him, God is taking care of him. You know, the... The context, Elijah is sent in the middle of nowhere to hide. And of course, you know, we know that God sent him there for two primary reasons. Protection and training. Keep him safe. Train him up. Because he's got a bigger thing coming for Elijah to do. God promised 
Elijah that his needs would be met while he is there. The lesson of these verses is this, that God's call is always accompanied by God's provisions. He's not going to take you through any place that He's not going to give you the grace to get through. We may not think it sometimes, but it's true. He will never send you to a place in life that He does not give you all you need to make it through that place. His place is always complete with His provisions for that place. You know, we here in verse 4, we notice that the promise that God offered, it, it involved advanced planning. We notice that before the need arose even, God already had the provisions in place. I mean, it, it, it wasn't like God was flying by the seat of His pants in trying to keep Elijah safe. He had all this stuff worked out ahead of time. When he informed the world, he made sure to form that little brook just for Elijah. Before he told the prophet to go to Cherith, God had already commanded the ravens to take care of God's man. And this lets us know that nothing not anything catches God by surprise. When this came up, God did not wring His hands in despair and say, oh no, what am I going to do? How am I going to keep this man alive? We don't see that. We just see God telling him, hey, you go over here and you can drink by the, you can drink of the brook. I've already commanded the ravens, they're going to feed you day and night. Don't worry about it. The thing that we need to remember out of this is that Cherith always comes equipped with God's provision. When we find ourselves in Cherith, God's provisions are there. If it's God's will that we're there, He's going to take care of it. We serve a God who is already alive tomorrow. He already knows what's happening. And that's a truth that we can never comprehend, but one which we certainly can't enjoy. Why, why should we worry about something when God's already been there? Before the dawn breaks, ever breaks tomorrow, the Lord is already there and He has already placed what we need in the path that we will take. Regardless of the circumstances or difficulty, God has already prepared the path that He wants us to take. This is one truth that Paul encountered during his fiery trial with the thorn of the flesh there in 2 Corinthians 12. Paul was told that the Lord had already supplied his need before it ever arose. So we can, we can just, we can trust God. If He's going to take us to a chariot, we can trust that He's going to take care of us while we're there however long that is. It may not be the way that we would determine it if it was our doing, but it is the way that God sees fit to do. And that ought to be good enough for us. Look at verse 6. 
says, The ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. I mean, when we look, it's not like, hey, he, uh, you know, you're just going to have to tighten up your belt. It's going to be lean here for a while. We find that God provided for him both day and night. God used a bubbling brook and some ravens to feed Elijah while he was stationed at Cherith. It's remarkable because ravens are scavengers. They feed of the flesh of the dead. And yet God used them to bring life-sustaining food to the prophet. You know, I've often wondered when, you know, you read this and, and it's like they brought him bread and flesh. In the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. You know, you often wonder where they got it from. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's not like they brought him some wild uh, something growing on the ground, you know. But they brought him bread and flesh or meat in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. At any rate, wherever they got it from, they got it because God, or, or whether God just supernaturally supplied it for them, just like He did with those that were traveling, uh, going to the promised land. You know, He fed them by manna and by quail that just happened to be there every day, except for Sunday. You know, we looked. God suspended the laws of nature to meet the need of His child. We must never forget that God knows what we need. If He has to, He will, he will move heaven and earth to see that our need is met. He knows where you are. And He knows where the provisions you need them. So we look, we find, I believe that he, He's literally telling uh, Elijah here, it's, hey, don't worry about, you know, maybe that's what's going through Elijah's head. He's saying, golly, you, know, you want me to go hide where? By some brook? How am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? How am I going to do? You know, I can't go anywhere. I got to be in hiding. Whatever. God already had all that figured out. He will direct your path to the place where He can meet your need. There in verse five, it says, "So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord." For he went and dwelt by the brook chair that is before Jordan. You know, we look and we find that this place involved abundant peace. I mean, when we notice the phrase that says, So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, when God called Elijah, simply stepped out in faith and obeyed. That's a secret to surviving your Cherith experiences. Coming to the place where we do not question God, but when He speaks, we respond by doing what we are told to do. We don't find, for one, we, Elijah comes on the scene here, and the first thing we hear is he's up in the face of the king. The second place that we find him is he's gone to a place where God had wanted him to go. 
again. And he went. Just like he went to King Ahab. See, when, when we're on God's payroll, He will pay our way. However, when we choose to walk a path that He has not ordained, He will literally make you pay your own way. We can look at uh, Jonah. Chapter 1 in the book of Jonah, verses 1 through 3. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But, Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarsus. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with him unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. God wanted him to go one place. And he went another. And when we see this, you know, literally, we all know the story of Jonah and the whale and, and all those things. But when he went his own way, he paid his own way. God didn't take care of him. Not like he wanted. Now God got his attention, that's for sure. I mean, when you go to the, you got to, something's got to get your attention when you go to the whale motel for three days, you know. You know, we look and we got to realize that this is the primary lesson for Elijah here at Cherith. God's servants must come to the place where they trust God alone. And they must trust Him absolutely. Elijah had nothing but the promise of God. And yet for him, that was sufficient to let him know that all would be well. Not only was the place ordained, and the promise that God offered, we see the plan that God ordered. If we go back into 5 and 6, we find and we see this plan that God ordered was a sovereign plan. We have to notice. We can't help but notice that God was in absolute control of the situation. He told him where to go. He told him what would happen and what he could do. And God did it. The ravens did as He commanded them and they brought bread and flesh to the prophet twice a day. The brook continued to provide liquid refreshment as well. All of this was ordered by the Lord to reach the prophet and to let him know that God was in absolute control of what happened. These ravens just didn't miraculously just show up every morning and evening and feel sorry for Elijah. No. They were ordered by God to do these things. When the Lord puts you in a place where you can do nothing but trust Him, 
he had done you the greatest favor that he can ever extend outside of salvation. Because he put you in a place where it's just him and you. When we come to the place where we are trusting him and him alone, we have reached a great level of mature growth. Not only was it a sovereign plan, because it was God's plan, but it was a satisfying plan. I mean, it was satisfying because Elijah enjoyed the fulfillment of the Lord's promises to him. He didn't have to wonder. Hmm. Wonder what I'm going to eat in the morning. Or, I take that back. He didn't have to wonder, am I going to eat in the morning? Or am I going to eat this evening? The ravens, they brought it. He received just what the Lord told him that he would receive. He found God to be true to His Word. Nothing means as much to a suffering saint as the peace of knowing that God is in control. We may not like the situation in which we find ourselves, but if we know that God is going to take care of us, then we can be satisfied anywhere with anything. I mean, we get to the point in our lives and in our maturity and within our spirituality that we can trust God no matter what, then it doesn't matter where we are or what we go through because we know God will take care of us. It was a submissive plan. We have noticed verse 5 tells us that he went and dwelt by the brook. The word dwelt means to live. Elijah wasn't headed out there for some overnight camping trip. He went out there to that brook and set up house. He wasn't intended to leave there until God told him to leave there. That's when we can begin to enjoy real victory in our lives regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. When we arrive at the place where we can submit to the Lord's will for our lives no matter how bad we may think it is, then we are on the path to help and blessing. The whole purpose in God's plan was to help Elijah come to the place where he could trust God for one day at a time. I would imagine that there was some fear in the prophet's heart that first evening. You know, you could just imagine, okay, here I am. Uh, let me try to find a comfortable place here by the brook. Man, I wonder if these ravens are going to show up. You know, that's that's us. And I, I and I'm sure. I mean, Elijah went, but I'm sure even maybe in his own heart, just a little bit on that first day, he was wondering how are these ravens going to know where to find me. Would they come? Would there be flesh and bread in the morning? But as the days passed and God proved Himself to be faithful 
and trustworthy. Elijah learned to walk by faith. That's where the Lord wants to bring us. Is where we will walk by faith. God wants us to come to the place where we do not know which step to take next. He wants us to be totally dependent upon Him. He wants us to rest in His arms by faith, without fear. Now, we get in here, we, we, we literally, we don't see any fear here. You know, if he had any fear at all, it would have been when he stepped right up to the king there, you know. But he did what God had told him to do, and we don't see any fear there. He went, and he did what he was told. You know, he wants us to rest in his arms by faith without fear, and he will put us by cherub to bring that to pass. He will cut us off and cut us down to teach us to trust Him fully. We're going to stop there. No, it's just I believe that you know he didn't have anything else for Elijah but to trust him. I'm going to take care of him, and God did it. Who didn't do it by the seat of his pants? He had it all prearranged, preplanned already. So as we as we stop here to go into our prayer bulletin, those out there, you know, I hope in that are, are watching this, that I hope that you may understand that the Lord has a place that He wants you to be and to take care of you there. We just have to learn to be obedient and to trust Him. So let's... Uh, we're going to sign off here tonight and we'll be back next time.